Hello, my beautiful witches. Welcome to Successful Witches, our podcast for indie romance lovers and writers where we are obsessed with spice, with smut, and with happily ever afters. Please welcome into this beautiful after dark segment that we are bringing to you, my dear friend and fellow smutty book witch, Nicole fucking Middleton. Welcome, Nicole. Hello, good evening. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, as always. Oh, thank you for having me once again. I'm so excited for this, always, as always. <laughs> as always, as always. These episodes are a lot of fun. And for those of you who've been listening along already to our few episodes that are out at the time that we're recording this, it has been absolutely giving us life to be seeing all your comments, seeing all your shares, seeing all your tags, getting your DMs. We love it. Mm -hmm. We love the vibe. And we have another beautifully delicious spicy as all fucking hell book to bring you this week <laughs> so good so without good. um without yet getting quite into our introduction Nicole could you just like give us maybe a couple of words of the vibe of the, like what what the reading experience has been for you this week with this book that we are oh. yet to yet to name but uh yet to name. oh it's just it's it's not only there's so much juice to this book. It is hot as fuck, but there's also this there's juice here. There's so much beauty in these relationships. The characters are just gorgeous, and um, there's also depth, like real world things going on here. There's real places, real names. There's you know, lots of realness to it. So it's there's oh there's just so much emotion and turmoil oh, and yeah. <laughs> I loved it. I oh, loved it. Absolutely. Yeah. It, 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 this book has been one that Nicole and I, as, as we usually do, but this has had an extra helping of screaming at each other in the WhatsApp messages mm -hmm. over this book because it really is, as you say, it, it kind of hits all of the notes of being spicy as fucking hell like holy, holy shit there is there is so much going on in this the book the spicy like the if you like attention yeah and character development and storyline it 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 is delicious and this is our first foray into a male male book on the mm -hmm. podcast which i i've been very excited to be able to start getting into some of these other genres beyond just male female and we are going to be doing much more of this and into why choose and all all of the different things mm -hmm. because we are all about love is love here on successful witches oh, in, all, in all of the multitude of shapes and forms and and ways and <laughs> experiences all of the things. love is love all of the ways all of the Especially, <laughs> especially in the delicious realm of indie romance that we we are able to see stories represented that in the past probably were never able to make it into the mainstream in the way they have now. So, yeah. and it's very exciting and it is our absolute smutty privilege to be bringing you our recommendation this week, which is <laughs> For the Fans by Nyla Kay. You genius, oh. you like I if if I could meet this woman and give her a hug, I fucking would because That's this cool. book, this book has brought so much joy, so much thigh clenching, squealing, squealing. <laughs> squealing. Oh, it's so good. It really is something so else. Good. <laughs> yeah, it's something else. It's different, but it's real and raw and emotional and sexy as all hell. And um, yeah, it's just, it's beautiful. So thank you, Nyla. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, you. Thank you for out. sharing this with us. <laughs> thank you for sharing with us with the world. <laughs> so just as a quick re quick recap or, or what to expect from For the Fans is we have stepbrother romance. We have taboo we have forbidden we have male male oh, we, have, good stuff. we have sexual awakening we have uh, mm -hmm. financial difficulty that leads to stepbrothers coming together yeah stepbrothers coming together to create an only fans is is the is the gist of uh why this book is entitled for the fans 
And we have our beautiful two male leads in this book, Avi and Kyron. Mm. And holy Jesus, fucking Christ. <laughs> what do we say about Avi and Kyron? <laughs> <laughs> they are like two hotties galore. I mean, yeah. they. I mean, we've got the footballer that is just ripped. Kyron, to yes. uh, uh, yeah, Kyron, He's just he's just the perfect footballer. He's he's yeah. hot. He's got the chiseled jawline. He's got the body of a god. Um, and he's he, just he is he's our star quarterback. Style. It's just the perfect jock. Like if you imagine the perfect jock. There we go. There he is. There in. Yeah, up on a silver platter for you. Um, when RV, on the other hand, is a complete opposite to this, um, in his emo vibe, anti-establishment, paints his nails black, his hair disheveled, smokes a joint every now and again or every now and a day. Every yeah, day. every every so, day. <laughs> <laughs> loves uh, loves yeah. a toke, does RV? Um, <laughs> yeah. Avi, Avi. And, and who also so happens to be shredded, Rips. hot, tattooed in this case. Um, so, so we have two artists as well. So we've yes. got the like emo, yeah. but like very smiley, happy go lucky artist. Um, and then we've got the very, really emo, like tense jock, like, oh, macho man. <laughs> Yeah, like Macho Man, more so than emo, right? Like he's yeah, the, he's the um. He's got the tight. internal turmoils. Yes, like Kyron. Kyron has got a lot of layers to him. Kyron. Kyron's got trauma. Kyron's got shit going on that he has he has dealt with by building this facade and this persona. Yes. Very um, stereotypical American high school jock. When mm -hmm. we first meet. Karen and Avi, they are stepbrothers. Well, they they have been thrust together as stepbrothers through the meeting of Avi's mother and Karen's father, and they are very much in the the last throes of high school. You know, Karen is Mister. Everybody wants to be him. Everyone wants to date him. Yeah. Avi, Avi is like the the nerdy goth kid loner. arty loner who who is starting at a new school right at the point in time when everybody's made friends like you know yeah. life, life life is hard to transfer high schools at sort of <laughs> what, whatever they are like 16 17 something like that anyway yeah. um and and we have a true enemies to lovers do we not this is so this is so true it's it's interesting because often you can read an enemies to lovers book and you're like oh that's cute like they're enemies but you know they're going to be lovers and you know that there's tension there because there's like a sexual vibe and you're just like oh you know they they kind of like each other but they don't want to like each other this is there's there's no like here in the beginning of the novel there's no like there's only hate, there's only tension, there's only this turmoil and this fuel and this anger and the frustration and it's like dark and deep and it's very real. Um, and then and then we shift into some forced encounters. <laughs> yes, which is really what's interesting, right? That the tension between them, like we literally have enemies as in like beating each other up on the floor of like the house at home yeah. right? like they, they are fighting to giving each other shit like the whole time physical either like confrontation or total ignoring not speaking to each other mm -hmm. you know um and and we we have this kind of forced situation occurs when they both go off to college Karen goes on full scholarship quarterback star quarterback. fast track to NFL I, I believe it's called NFL. Anyway, for, for, terribly sorry for our American listeners that we we do not know the ins and outs of pro pro football. Uh, I believe I'm here it's called for the, the NFL, air, not the sports. <laughs> the sport. Um, <laughs> Go team. We 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 are here for the sports. Um, <laughs> and and so he 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 has been accepted. You know he's he's. Got his got his um full scholarship mm. star of the show essentially. Um, Avi for shits and giggles applies 
because he actually has no has no plan, has no direction, has no nothing other than I like doing art and whatever. Let's see if I can fuck with my stepbrother. So he applies to the same school, gets in, <laughs> much to Karen's angst. Dismay. Dismay. Dismay is probably putting it politely. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and and so they end up going to the same school, but they're they're assigned different houses where they're living, residential places. Mm. Um, Avi fully lucks into this like high end penthouse. penthouse situation that's normally reserved for the elite of the elite of the school. Mm. Um, and and not only that, but his roommate, who he is supposed to be sharing this luxury apartment with doesn't show so Avi's just kicking around in this kind of palace um <laughs> and pretty quickly things t- take a turn in the fact that uh financially their parents are in difficulty and they find out that they either have to drop out of school or have to come up with the money to be able to pay their way um mm-hmm. And it it's a lot of money. Like this is this is significant thousands and thousands of dollars. So they're basically looking I mean, at they both refuse, they can't stay at home. Like they yeah. can't move at home. Like the yeah. you know, yeah. it's just it's that's just a ridiculous option. Like no one's gonna live at home while they go to college. They're trying to escape home. Yes. These guys, yes. they don't want to live got, at home. We've got without going into it too much, we've got Karen and his dad, uh no bueno. Like they do not get on. <laughs> his dad's an asshole. And yeah. So on and so forth. Um, you know, Karen, Karen needed to be out of home. It's his thing. Mm-hmm. Um, Avi probably couldn't care less because he's a mummy's boy. But mm-hmm. hey, you know, he's he's a dreamer. He's a drifter. He's but he's, yeah, a- he's also just made cool friends, and he doesn't want to go uh, back home. He's like, yeah. why should I? Like, I've got my friends here. Uh, but also, just to make a point here, Rose, is that we have jumped a couple of years into the future now. So they were like six, 16, 17 um, when they met, but now we've jumped into the future, and they're in, they're in um, college, yeah, they're, they're college, university, age. Yeah. yeah, yeah, college age. Um, um, so yeah, so that it's an interesting dynamic that's starting to reveal itself now. <laughs> yes. Now that we're in this crunch point of we need a lot of money and we need it fast. Mm-hmm. Enter stage right, stage left, whatever we want to call it. Uh Abby's, Abby's the theater. The wonderful Frankie, who is who is a fantastic side character in this story, mm. uh, who who lets slip that she so happens to have a little thing called a little side gig that pays for her lifestyle that's very comfortable thank you very much yeah. um and so Avi's ears perk up at this and he very quickly takes the plunge gets on in uh-huh. realizes that hey there's a lot of money that could happen here and things escalate fairly rapidly to the point yeah. where we we have a situation that Frankie's already got an existing big community and she says, hey, let's collab. It's going to bring you in a whole lot of new people. It's going to get you fast cash. um, And then you can go on from there to do whatever it is you want to do. But hey, let's make it something worthwhile. Yeah, let's bring in a third party. Let's make it something worthwhile that's going to be guaranteed (laughs) cha-ching, right? (laughs) Oh my gosh, so excited. <laughs> would, would you like to um give us a little uh recap of of kind of this this scenario, Nicole? Because oh I know this, I like this, was, this was about the point that the true screaming started <laughs> in in the in the WhatsApp <laughs> chat that we have going on. So good. I mean, the way this is just the perfect way she writes this as well. So obviously Avi's doing it been doing a couple of um things for OnlyFans. Um Frankie's been doing it for ages. So they're like a cu- little bit versed in this. And Frankie comes up with this brilliant idea to do a threesome. And now Avi is like, of course, like let's do that. I know it's wild, whatever, let's do it. Yeah. Like you're gonna have to find another dude. Turns out it's now Halloween and they're doing the Halloween party. So Frankie is dressed up in this gorgeous, like half angel, half devil outfit, which I'm just, I can just see it in my brain with like glitter and wings and everything. And I'm like, she must just look absolutely incredible. And um, she starts somehow, I think, I think it was Avi that invites his stepbrother Kai to this 
party just because he was kind of feeling bad for him. So he was like, come on to the party. You know, we're going to have drinks. It's going to be fun. It's a Halloween party. Just come. It'll be cool. Uh, and they're still like enemies here. But for some wild reason, Kyron is actually like, okay, he he ends up going to this party. And I think before he comes to the party, they'd, they'd already kind of sowed the seed of like, this is what we're doing. You don't have yeah. You don't have to go along with it kind of decide mm. on the night but this is the money that could come out the other side so they yeah. they they rope him in because they know that for a start he needs the money and secondly he's kept like captain of the football team jock star yeah. quarterback he ain't gonna tell nobody about nothing right like yeah. he's got he's got a lot to lose if he tells people he so he they, they kind of are a little they're a little bit sneaky sneaky with kind of picking on Kyron and, and going you have to come and do yeah. this with us because, you know, they know that he is not going to tell anyone. And also he is between a rock and a hard place financially. Yeah, so, 100%. Yeah. So anyway, they, get up to the <laughs> they get up to the bedroom. Continue. They get up to the bedroom and they're like, so this is this is what's going to go down. And um, Karen's basically like, not a fucking chance. And they're kind of like, well, why are you here then? You came. <laughs> so yeah. clearly there's some, <laughs> yeah. some sort of like. Why are you here, Karen? <laughs> happening Karen like we use, yeah. you're saying something different and this is kind of the theme for Karen the entire like the entire book he like sees something different to what he's actually doing but like he arrives places and they're like oh so you're keen and he's like I'm not keen yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm so I'm angry keen. about being here <laughs> I'm being here but I'm here <laughs> Uh, and, and like they, they eventually are just like saying to him like well you're here already you clearly want yeah. this like let's just go for it it's a threesome we don't have to touch like and he's like I'm not gay and um Abby's like well neither am I we're having a threesome like we don't have to touch we don't like it's fine like just yeah. relax it's gonna be okay um and you know they were like okay cool like get around to doing it and Frankie's just like oh, I'm having the best time oh. ever like she's got two fucking gods like basically between her thighs like I mean <laughs> I love Frankie as well because she's so naughty that she's always got like this little kiss in her eye like she's like egging them on because there's such beautiful tension between them and it's not uh, there's sexual tension but it's more anger tension and she's just like seeing the future I feel like she's got a glimpse into the future she's like this is sexual, guys. You guys don't realize it yet, but it 100% there's, is. There's like movie magic going on here. That yeah, she she's like see. watching the whole thing from the start. <laughs> I'm being like, oh my gosh, this is gold. Yeah. <laughs> but, but anyways, they end up having this threesome where Avi and Kyron are like desperately trying not to touch each other because they're not gay. <laughs> And Frankie's just there, like in the middle, being like, "Yeah, just do me. It's fine." Yeah. Um, and at one point, they're like, they're like eating her out, and Kyron's getting angry at at Kai because he's kind of like touching his her, his fingers, and he's like, "Don't touch me!" And he's like, "Oh, oops," because he gives him shit all the time as well. I fucking love Abby because he's just like challenges. Kyron all the time and Kyron's the kind of guy that doesn't get challenged mm -hmm. like he's the, the head of the football team he's hot as fuck he gets the girls all the time he just doesn't get challenged so Avi challenging him is, this, is like this annoyance and this frustration and this anger but it's different to what he's used to so he's always like angry about it but there's something there it's like and Avi's just like push like poking that bear constantly so it's it's beautiful I love it um Anyways, they have a beautiful day with Frankie, do the scene, and it goes kaboom on OnlyFans mm. to the point where everyone is just like, hey, can you do that again but ditch the girl? Yeah. <laughs> part, isn't it? But here's Avi like going, holy fucking shit, there's all this money flowing in, mm. but holy fucking shit, there's all these DMs flowing in being like, <laughs> we just want you and the dude like we just want you the dude, guy. Yeah. like you guys are so good together like don't worry about the girl we'll just pay we'll pay double triple whatever you want to get you two back in the room together and so back. he's Bring having this like existential crisis going <laughs> what oh my god like my stepbrother is like might actually kill me like yes. like this is kind of like his inner monologue is hilarious at this point <laughs> in the book because he's like pretty much will just be like I think Kyron might actually murder me like you know yeah. like they, they, if I break this up 
<laughs> yeah. And it's interesting because he's like, he doesn't even record anything for about a month or two. And he like tries to ignore the fans because he's like, I don't know what to do right now. <laughs> um, because anything that he produces, they're like, oh, but where's the other dude? And he's yeah, like, they're oh. like, we don't want you just on your own. Like, we're, we're, we're yeah. okay with you just it's doing stuff on your own, but either. like, give us the goods. Like, <laughs> yeah, give us the goods. Yeah, exactly. We, we don't like, we need more now. So, yeah. anyways, he eventually kind of builds up the courage to approach Kyron and go, hey, dude, like, you know, if you still need some more money. Yeah. You know, I've got, like, I need you to read some of these comments. Like, the people want to see yeah. more. And of course, Kyron's like, fuck that. No. <laughs> and it's written oh so well it is written so well now before we go any further for, past this point mm. let's just take a little side tangent into something that you and I were talking about once we you know I had already read the book and you were starting to read it and one of the mm. first things that you kind of brought up was like holy shit, Nyla Kay has written, like, the best intro forward, like, mm -hmm. pre-warning yeah. pre, uh, pre -warning <laughs> to this book. Yeah. That, you know, and I think before we go any further into the into the goods, <laughs> we, we need, to, we need to, to just, like, take a moment to recognize how aware Nyla Kay is of not only the the sensitive subject matters of this book, like because we have a hella spicy, oh. sexy, hot as all fuck book, um, but there is a lot of deep, yeah, like a lot of deep things going on, and there are a lot mm -hmm. of triggers, and there are a lot okay. of um lines constantly being kind of blurred and mm -hmm. um you know sort of confusion and yeah, yeah. So, I don't know again. if you if do you want to just kind of like riff on that for a moment because I know it's something that before we kind of get into talking more about where things go from this threesome <laughs> <laughs> which spoiler yeah. alert oh, oh, so fans oneself frantically <laughs> it was so hot anyways yeah let's let's just take it down the notch and just I just I was literally in the um in the whatsapp talking to Rose about this like I essentially I was just saying how perfect it is that that Nyla Kay wrote this forward because it's it's really difficult to walk that line between not wanting to trigger people and also being aware that there's a lot of trauma in this world and we can obviously trigger people. So essentially, um, the first couple of lines of the forward, she says, I'll be honest here, preparing you for what to expect from the story is extremely difficult. Yeah. You're about to embark on a long complex journey with these characters and I think that is so accurate so she goes she says there are a couple of things that I, I want to warn you about but I feel like warnings are something uh, if you'd like to have warnings you need to kind of go on to the website where she lists a whole of the triggers um, but she also says that she doesn't really want you to go read the triggers because then you're not going to be in the story and you're not going to be have the depth and you're not going to be able to journey with these characters like what like Ellie Rose and I have. So um, essentially, she says, most importantly, she is, I have a responsibility to let you know that there are highly sensitive matters discussed in this book, but in the interest of not spoiling the story, I've listed the con them on the content warning on the page of my website. Make no mistake, I want you, the reader, to feel the organic, raw emotions of these characters, but I don't want it to negatively affect your emotional state. So if you do have certain triggers, I want you to pre be prepared before reading. And then she also goes on to say, if you have no triggers in fiction, I highly recommend that you do not go and view the content warning page and you go into the book relatively blind. Um, go into the book knowing that it is a queer stepbrother romance that involves filming sex acts for money and have fun with that. And I freaking love that because, you, you know, yes, if you've got the triggers and there's things that you need to be prepared for, 100% prepare yourself. We don't want anyone to be in an emotional state that is going to put them in turmoil. 
And also, this is fiction. And we get to heal through reading as well. We get to go through our own awakenings, our own sexual awakenings, our spiritual awakenings, our own emotional awakenings. We get to read these characters as if maybe and relate to them as if we were them and kind of journey alongside them. So it's such a beautiful process of awakening and understanding different things from different angles and being able to see everything as a whole. So I think I, I just love that she brought that, um, all of that to our attention before we got involved and we could really fully dive into the juice of this book. It's amazing. Yeah. And I love that she kind of mentions, it's like this, just have a lot of fun with this as well. Cause as yeah. much as it's like, there, there are really heart wrenching moments and, you know, mm -hmm. It, it takes you on such an emo emotional roller coaster. There is also a lot of stuff in this book that is just fucking funny as hell. It's entertaining as hell. It's hot as all hell. <laughs> it really is a journey. And I know for a lot of people who I've seen talk about this book, particularly, it's been their first experience of, say, like a male-male book mm -hmm. as well. You know, and I think so that's something that, that we've not only got characters who are themselves experiencing yes. a relationship of, of sorts, you know, um, for the first time. You're going to have readers who are experiencing it for the first time. Yes. You're going to have people who are, you know, um, not familiar with this type of book. You've got not only like uh, sexual identity being discussed and thrown around, you know, Avi mm -hmm. basically saying, well, I'm pretty sure at this point I'm bi, and yeah. Byron kind of having the whole wrestle constantly with himself around, I'm not gay, I'm not gay, you know, like <laughs> the, the real like, I feel so fucking good, but I'm not gay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm fucking obsessed like, with you, but I'm not gay, gay, you know, gay. like yeah. <laughs> and and you know, the 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 torturous turmoil that that puts torturous, the characters yeah. through. But at the same time, you know, we've we've got them basically going. I'm I'm so obsessed with you and like in love with you yes. and the sweetest most romantic moments in amongst mm -hmm. these very oh. kind of like hilarious moments that come about because of the fact that it's this construct that they're coming together to film for yeah. new fans um and and one of the things that you and I were talking about is the fact that what I really love is that even though that is kind of the context of this book, of, of how their relationship starts, they actually are not filming porn, right? Like the, yes. only, the only actual time there is ever like a setup of some sort of scene that they're filming is the threesome right at the very start with yeah. Frankie. Everything else that is kind of talked about in the book or the scenes that are recorded mm -hmm. in the book um or that, that happen in the book but are recorded at the same time. Anyway, uh, whatever way we want to describe it. Um, they seem to be organic. Out. Yeah, they're very organic and they're very much just two people who are falling in love and having these kind of like awkward sexual like encounters, encounters that are very intense and very full on <laughs> and very, you know, full of passion. And and they the characters themselves will literally like when they've kind of like finally returned to their bodies after orgasm number like whatever um <laughs> will literally have these moments where they're talking about it and they're like oh my god the camera's still rolling like you know like and, and that was the bit that for me yeah I love that I just was doing the little like you know when you have those moments where you're like kicking your feet and you're just having the little like squeal as you're reading because it's so like literally I'm having out of body experiences and then coming, like floating back down to earth going okay oh shit we record we actually yeah, like, recorded ourselves doing oh, that the like, camera's the still camera rolling yeah. <laughs> you know and that's the cute way that it kind of organically mm. happens their relationship that it just so happens that it's on camera um but it's and not like they're not doing these performative things yeah the whole the whole book is about like the I mean the the label of for the fans the whole book they're going through oh we're just doing this for the fans when it's not for us yeah um, it's <laughs> for the fans so every time they do something they hit record because they were like oh no it's it, it's and we know that we're like exploring our sexuality and we're like figuring things out but it's we're not just doing that by us it's for the fans it's not for us okay yes. And especially for Kyron, he's just like, yeah. I'm going to record this. And he's like, do you want me to? Like, yes, record it. Yeah. When, 
We're not here for nothing. We're doing it for the fans. I'm not. I'm not here for any other reason. I'm just doing it for freaking yeah. money. And and part, and, and the, like, the, yeah, right. <laughs> the funny, the funniest, I guess. Well, not funny, but like the the best way that Nyla K writes that sort of moment is that literally Kyron's standing there having this kind of semi tantrum about you know oh well why the fuck am I here if we're not recording it sort of thing yet he is the one who has turned up at Avi's apartment at like midnight or like two in the morning you know like it is so um Kyron keeps coming to him essentially and and despite all his protesting and his grump behavior and you know um and Avi just the whole time is this ultimate like cool chill chill like yeah. whatever like I she know you all yeah he's like I know you're coming to me like we're, we're just he he fully is the one who's like in charge of the account he's dealing with everything yeah. he's sending Kyron all the texts and like the paying him out money, all of yeah. the stuff he's doing all the business management essentially of this arrangement and he even will say like well in typical Kyron fashion we have this very charged sexual experience together and then he literally like disappears like I don't hear from him for a week two weeks and it gets really awkward because I've got all the fans messaging waiting (laughs) (laughs) so we we have to obviously um this this segues us beautifully into our character swoon segment that we oh, love to do yes. because because we've got a lot of swooning to do about these two characters and and yeah. just just um while Nicole goes and finds her favorite character swoon quote that I'm sure she's got lined up is if you if you're watching you will be able to see Nicole furiously swiping through <laughs> the numerous the numerous screenshots that we have in our chat um yeah. just just to give a little bit more of I guess the the sort of final kind of recap on on where the story goes because we don't want to give away too many spoilers we still want to let you enjoy the story if you haven't read it already we just kind of want to set up set up the hype and set up the vibe and everything for you that you know it's no spoiler that this is a book with a happy ever after you know like this these are the books these are the books we review we don't we don't review ones that it doesn't end in the happily ever after however you know um we do take you through a journey. Yeah, it, it, it takes you on a journey. There, there is a lot to unpack. There, there is, there is a fuckload of sex in this book. Like, let's be really mm. honest. Like, like this is a it's book really, that is about. Oh, I can't wait to get into the scenes. Though. Like, <laughs> oh, about, those like... scenes. We need to discuss that bathroom scene. I think that's one of my. It was. I think yeah. Yeah, we're not going to jump the gun. Let me just calm the fuck down, Nicole. Okay, let's stop talking I know. about this. I think I, I was messaging Nicole earlier this afternoon before we recorded, going. <laughs> Breathe. Remember to breathe, Nicole. Remember to breathe, Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> so uh as as we kind of progress, I guess, from the the decision that they've made, they're gonna start recording together. We 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 mm-hmm. have two characters that are very, you know, fumbling their way through what it means to be, you know, exploring your sexuality, redefining who you are, coming to terms with who you are. Kyron fighting tooth and nail the entire way. Avi being very openly kind of straight away going, well, I guess I'm bi. I, sure I, I, enjoyed, I enjoyed that a hell of a lot. So I'm very open to the idea That's that I am obviously. <laughs> um, but I'm saying you just fight it for yeah. a little bit there because like even Frankie and, and is it her and then B? Yeah. Um, she's like, they're both like, oh, you must, why don't you hook up with that guy? And he's like, why would I do that? And he's like, I can see, like, didn't you say the other day that you were watching yeah, like that you movie? Found you said so that hot. was sexy. <laughs> and he's like, oh, fuck, I really need to concentrate on what I'm saying when I'm high and drunk. <laughs> because clearly, like, just letting all these things slip. Because he's not being honest about it out in the open, but he's thinking about it in his head. He's like, I'm pretty sure I'm bi, but out in the open, he's like, nah pretty straight still and yeah. everyone's like no we can see him some mile away bro like you're definitely yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we we have a very cute kind of um thing going on with them with them both like individually exploring themselves but also then coming together mm. and having this, having this um very hot but also very cute uh relationship progress 
um and and I then it's also beautiful rose like i because i think i was talking to you at this point around um that whole expl ex explanation exploration as well because this is the, the the beauty of of exploring your sexuality like for me i had no clue and it's just been uh i think what i said to you was that you don't just wake up one day and go hey i'm bi yeah <laughs> Or, hey, I'm yeah. a lesbian or anything like that. You're actually going through all these experiences just like they are in the book. Mm. So it's such a beautiful thing to witness that behind the scenes and, and that there, there is this confusion and this turmoil inside going, hang on, I, I feel, feel like I would have known by, I don't know, they're in their 20s or 18, like 18 to 20s-ish you feel like you would have known at some point like they've been going out with girls they've been dating girls they've been sleeping with girls they 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 guess they like girls they don't know anything different and I think that's the key here is that when you don't know anything different you don't you just assume that everything is normal like for me I just assumed that everybody likes girls like I mean <laughs> I thought that was normal you know <laughs> Like, I mean, I like, I like guys. I married a guy. I love my husband, but I thought everybody finds girls attractive. Like that's pretty normal until you realize at some point that no, some women just like me end up yeah. like full stop. And you're like, okay, this is now making sense to me. Mm -hmm. So this is the journey that they take you on. And when you start to realize that it's not like a clear cut black and white thing, that some people are really confused for a long period of time. Other people like Avi are like, huh, that feel re felt really good. I guess I'm bi and Kai is like that felt fucking amazing but I am not gay yeah <laughs> not happening I've been told my whole life that I'm straight you know I, I am the yeah. captain of the football team I'm not allowed to be gay this is not the way it's supposed to be I'm supposed to date the cheerleader I am not gay so yeah. you've got all of these but, big but please Abby <laughs> fuck me in the ass again because I'm not really fucking <laughs> I have arrived at two in the morning drunk as a skunk and I am going to be angry about it but I'm gonna let you bang my brains out <laughs> and then I'll be angry about it again <laughs> oh so, yeah, honestly it's a beautiful it's... journey a beautiful, so well beautiful done journey. It is so well oh, done. Well. Between them. So, so did you have a quote early. that you wanted to um, get into as we character swoon for a hot moment? Character swoon of Avi. I love Avi. I mean, oh, like, oh. I, I am like, the, rereading this book in preparation for this episode, like, mm -hmm. just reconfirmed for me how much Avi Vega altered my brain chemistry the first time I read this book. And it has reignited my oh, obsession. My <laughs> Like I've got, I get that every time I close my eyes, I've got a flash of him, like behind my eyelids. <laughs> so, so here's Avi. Let's, anyway, let's let's share some Avi swooning because Avi quote. So this is Kyron talking about Avi, like he's thinking about him and like looking at him and stuff. So it says, shaking it off, I push my worrisome thoughts to the back of my mind watching as Avi stubs out his joint, then pours liquor into two solo cups. His nails are painted chip black, some ink marks on his knuckles that prove he's not, in fact, a jock, despite how he dresses and the way his body looks. He's, he's a bizarre character, a nerd who's not good at school, an emo kid who smiles all the time, an artist with, with more muscle than some of the dudes on my team, He's an aberration, and I think it, his haphazard personality is what makes me dislike him so much, more than the fact that he popped out of nowhere and moved into my life like it's just that easy. He's almost impossible to pin down, and I hate that. So this is him figuring Avi out at the beginning and just, yeah. like, watching him and, like, trying to figure – I mean, who tries to figure out someone that much? I don't know, but clearly yeah. something there. <laughs> yeah, and I love actually well, – just off the back of that quote, he then goes, like, Chiron then goes on to think to himself, because this is Chiron, like, Chiron is very, um, like Black we were saying before, he, he's very, like, everything has to be organized. He's very kind of mm. like OCD almost, like, um, you know, needs everything yes. to be in a box. Need it, That's his coping mechanism, right? So, and again, remember, like, Chiron's got hashtag trauma, like, serious shit going on, right? Yeah. So he's, he has developed... He has developed some very, very um, what works for him to get him through the day, right? And, yeah. and Avi just like railroads in and like 
smashes all of that to pieces in a very beautiful way because it, you know. Um, and so Chiron then goes on to say to himself in his mind, I want to be able to read people to know mm. what their intentions are, because this is again to do with Chiron's trauma, right? Like trust people's intentions, um, mm. you know, and and all the reading like, the room, reading the situation, yeah, like understanding who he's safe with, things like that. Um, he says, I like my humans transparent. And Avi is a murky mass of opaque complexities. And I'm like, <laughs> I just remember reading that line for the first time. It's and being like, oh, like it is Nyla Kelly. Yeah, it is, it is just it spoke to me on such a level because I'm like, yes, like that is the mm, whole thing, thing, right? That you know, it 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 just gives you that squealy feeling of like when you do know you're like when you do know you're really falling for someone that you're like I want to know everything about you like I want to know all of the complexities about you I'm I want to know what's below the surface and I don't care if there's yes complexities because that's what I want I want to know your truth and but I feel like that's what love is right like you if you could read someone fully completely and utterly like that's that's boring as fuck like as soon as you can yeah. read someone and you can that it's done it's done yeah. like he can read his girlfriends that he's had like Lexi and all the cheerleaders yeah. he can read, read them like a book and you know like, if it's that, if it's that obvious if it's that transparent like then that deeper connection you're wanting with someone is not there right yeah and so when yeah, there is that hint of yeah when there's that hint of there's something so much deeper that your soul kind of connects with mm. yeah like oh I know it's like real ghost <laughs> territory right like um so in so amongst good. these very beautiful things we've also got um very very hot things going on with our with our little character swooning moments and yeah. you know we've got um like this this is like one of Avi's quotes that I really really love <laughs> that basically <laughs> sums up Avi's kind of sense of humor that is so present in this book like it, it is written so well he's got such a funny internal monologue that because he's very in his head like he's very introverted as well mm. as being this very cool cat you know so he's he's very stuck in his head the whole time and so as we were mentioning before you know Kyron has this tendency to disappear after they have these very sexually charged filming moments um of of sexual exploration together and so Avi says, um, <laughs> he's basically re recap recounting to himself like how he's ended up here. You know, he 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 even says like, I feel like this is a choose your own adventure book. You know, every step brings us in a new direction. Um, mm -hmm. And he kind of is talking about how they've ended up in this very strange situation together. Um, I'm currently in a good old fashioned pickle of sexual turmoil with my own damn stepbrother. As has become the standard, I haven't spoken to Kyron in many days since the epic incident of 69 <laughs> <laughs> that completely obliterated any and all questions as to whether or not I enjoy hooking up with dudes. <laughs> I think at this point it's safe to say that I'm fully bisexual because in all honesty, I did not hate having a dick in my mouth. <laughs> did not hate it one bit. I hate it one bit is the next slide after that. And I'm just like, oh, it's so, it's so, so, much. It's so fucking funny. So good. Same to say, I did not hate it. Nope. Yeah, not did not bit. hate having a dick in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and and I think he has all these other like, you know, really quirky things about him that that just are the things that make you really swoon over him. Like the fact that he's really into like conspiracy theories is one that mm -hmm. I just loved so much about him and there's all these like little tiny details like even down to the fact that he paints his nails black but then they're always like draws, you know like and he yeah. and he draws and he's always wearing like these skinny jeans but they've ripped and you know mm -hmm. he he, he kind of wears the like oh but the, like, outfit, the, the outfit like, that we were talking about oh. when he like was it was it Kyron arrived one day? Obviously, maybe it was like two in the morning or whatever, with like like he does. Oh, um, the sweatpants. The sweatpants. 
Safe to say the WhatsApp went crazy over the sweatpants. <laughs> yeah, I can see that in my mind's eye. The way he described it, I was just like, oh my gosh, those sweatpants like hanging low on his hips. Or you're just like, how do those things stay up there? Like, I know how they're staying up. <laughs> how do they stay up there? Yeah, <laughs> like, how? Slung low on the hips. And then he's wearing like, um, like a black loose t-shirt and this backwards cap. The backwards cap. <laughs> oh that just does it for me <laughs> yeah the backwards cap and 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 it also becomes his identity like with being the yeah. only fans character that he creates I guess for himself or business he creates for himself because that, that's his handle on it is backwards backwards cap oh yes and, backwards cap guy yeah, or something. and so that's his trademark thing that he always wears and just to give you like a little glint of the the cuteness that comes about of not only how hot they are together like sexually but then the cute moments mm -hmm. um, so basically Avi starts wearing this cap and it's just like whatever cap he's had lying around and I and and again yay sports like I don't understand anything about American sports so forgive me for getting all of these details wrong please <laughs> but basically he's wearing a type of baseball team cap and mm. Tyron gifts him one that is basically the team of where they like his favorite team and he basically in a very cute mumbly kind of way is like oh I couldn't stand seeing you always wear like that other team's cap kind of cap. thing so he gives him this new cap to wear <laughs> It's just heart melt, like heart yeah. melt emoji, like melting emoji. It is, it is. And so just um <laughs> just to dive over a little for a little hot second into Kyron's. Oh room, god, are we getting um, heavy? Like we we just I just wanted to talk touch on the fact that like um while we're talking about the names and the the OnlyFans handles, so Kyron starts out his journey. Um, with the OnlyFans by basically Avi pushing him to say you need to be part of this you need to mm -hmm. engage with the fans like so create your own account and your own Twitter profile and things and you know pull your weight basically um, so they had had this little like interaction I think the <laughs> night before or something where Avi had called him baby and Kyron gets very, very Kyron about it and like has a full kind of like, no, no, that that is that is not what you call a man kind of moment. Yeah. Um, and so he goes off and creates his profile that is not your baby. <laughs> <laughs> and it is just so fucking hilarious. It is so good. But he's like doing it the whole time, like smirking to himself. Harvey. like it's just the most genius writing and basically like straight away Arby texts him and is like not your baby huh like uh, you know um and giving him shit and so he's he's all like proud of himself like chest puffed out like yeah I'll show you Arby. like I'm not your baby and then I think Arby just basically sends him this gif of them fucking <laughs> it's like Give sure up. looked like my baby last night <laughs> Tyron's like frantically trying to delete <laughs> everything. <laughs> so good. Like this, this is what I mean. Like this book. Yeah. Like this book just takes you on such a roller coaster of like it's so good. Heartwarming, tears. Yeah. Like just just, just so the whole terms Yeah. And, the whole like, spectrum. So it's like You've got a spicy, smutty, deliciously sexually uh, aroused ed educational book. <laughs> Dare we say it? So good. <laughs> oh, but can we can we say? Can, do we? I think we need to do this every time because I think we've started a little theme here. When regards, like, we need to say our favorite sex scene. Yeah, yeah. The why, the why we're obsessed. Why, why we're obsessed. obsessed yeah. with why why we're obsessed. Scene. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right, okay. Nicole. Why? Yeah. Why? Why are you obsessed with for the fans? What is what is your favorite for the fans moment? Bearing in mind as well, Nicole has not yet finished reading, so 
we we, we there's a couple of pa- there's a couple of chapters yeah. there at the end that I'm still getting. So I haven't I yeah. haven't got all the way to all the lovey dovey stuff. Yeah. I'm still in the hot and heavy angry stuff. Because <laughs> yeah. we will still also like you know asterisk to say that this is a very long book as well. Like this is not a, is. this is not a quick read. Um, so be warned as well. Going it into it's the, good that way. I think that it's book. it's not brushing over all of the depth. Yeah, she didn't try it's, and like condense it, which I really appreciate. Yes. Oh, oh, I appreciate that she did not try yeah. to condense <laughs> this book it's into any less. Like it is. It's when they try and take a series of three books and they stuff it into one movie and you're like, what the yeah. fuck? Maybe you left some stuff yeah. out. Like this yeah. book needs to be this long to get the juice and the thing. And it's not it's not too long. It doesn't feel like you're you're like it's going on oh, for ages because there's so more. much going on constantly. <laughs> and then the sex is there, right there to just fill in the gaps. It's just beautiful. Um, but I so, will admit so why, that I, why are you obsessed, Nicole? Why, why, why am I obsessed? obsessed? Oh my gosh, just the, the tension and the the playfulness, the comp- the paradox between the playfulness of Avi and the anger of Kyron. And how he always, Kyron, he always finds himself like right up against Avi, like in the most beautiful ways. So my favorite was in the scene um, in the bathroom at where they're at some party and he walks in on um, Avi and this other girl. And I think it's just one of his girlfriends, like not, yeah. not sexually, just one of, uh, one of his friends, one yeah. of his besties. And he's like, oh, you better get out here because I'm so angry and I'm going to fuck this dude up. And he's like, what the fuck is going on here? I'm not even doing anything. Yeah. <laughs> he's like drunk. He's high. Yeah. He's having a good time. Like, yeah, like we're just chatting. Like, we're, we're smoking, like hotboxing the bathroom. Like it's all good. Yeah. Anyway, so B gets out and these guys, and he gets right up in his face and he's like right there and their, their like noses are touching and their foreheads are touching and it's like everything's there and he's so angry and I think he's got his like hand around his neck and he's just so angry and like um, I think <laughs> and then he's pretty like, much like lock the door <laughs> he's like do you want to record this? <laughs> yeah because it's for the fans bro I'm not doing this for anything else it's for the fans bro <laughs> Yeah, lock the fucking door. It's like literally what the he door, says. Abby, I think he's just like lock the fucking door. I think he says it like two or three times. Like, yeah. please lock and the Abby's door. Like, yeah. Make sure you lock the door. He's like, lock the fucking door, Avi. <laughs> barricade it. He's like, I'll barricade it with your body. <laughs> and then he's like, Are you gonna record? He's like, Do you want me to record? He's like, Damn straight, I want you to record. So Avi's like holding his phone in some weird position while he's like barricading no. the door. With, with his body and there's just like oh my gosh there, so there is there is like um aggressive kissing there is coming in pants like there is coming in pants. <laughs> it's just like explosions everywhere <laughs> no one can control themselves yeah it's like total and I think like that scene is so fucking hot but it also is like the real scene where it kind of like it pulls up it, it um what's the word I'm looking for like I've lost my words Nicole like <laughs> lots my words um it it spills over from being kind of this very like clean cut process of like Mm -hmm. we're just doing this within the apartment and we're just filming it like within this space like it literally just like leaking over yeah like their real life of like they just happen to both be at the same party and like Mm -hmm. can't keep their hands off each other kind of thing that's like like, he's he's causing a fight just so they can get up in Avi's face Um, and I'm like all right I see what you're doing yeah yeah it's like we see you Kai we We see you You don't even want to get up in Avi's face and get all like hot and heavy with him. Even yeah. if you're masking it as anger, he's just like, yeah. yeah. And so, I was like, yeah, get it for weed. <laughs> so there are like a million different hashtags. Oh, I'm, obs- I'm obsessed with this book. But like, I think for me, the biggest pleasant surprise that I was not expecting going into this book was how daddy Avi is in this book. <laughs> like he is the hot alt nails mm-hmm. painted emo ripped tattooed daddy yeah well I've got a quote but it's like it's um it's from Kyron's point of view that is yeah. like basically about the power dynamic of how Avi is the one that is the calling top. the shots yeah he's he calling the, the top shots in this relationship yes. and uh he's so hot while he does it and he's very commanding and he's very mm-hmm. 
um very daddy energy and it's also not <laughs> in an obvious way he's just giving no. him shit and it's beautiful yeah, yeah. It's just like he just does it with a smirk on his face and a smile yeah. and like just knows he just knows that Karen is like desperate to be like you know Gosh. stepped on basically like <laughs> And so, yeah, it's at the the bit that I really loved and the quote that I grabbed for this particular <laughs> like demonstration is from mm -hmm. Karen's point of view. Um, and it it's it's actually quite sweet, like, you know, so it yeah. basically uh Karen's thinking about their their situation and you know what what they're doing, and he's kind of like, I'm learning that. Uh, he, as in Avi, can be awfully demanding. <laughs> and for some unknown reason, I constantly find myself bending to him. I'm telling myself it's just about the money, but lying in bed at night over the past few weeks, since we started this little venture, the hidden thoughts creep to the surface. Something about him taking control settles me on a deep mm -hmm. emotional level. I'm not at all equipped to deal with. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm like... I'm not either, Kai. <laughs> I am not either. <laughs> That's a beautiful um, dynamic. Yeah. Uh, let alone make space in my mind for RV to be the person sitting next to me on this plane as it spirals in a downward trajectory, heading straight for impending doom. <laughs> so it's like, Kai is like fully having this like existential crisis, like his, his internal plane is spiraling. <laughs> Um, but he's like, Avi is sitting right there and I am perfectly happy for him to like step all over me like while we yeah. do it, you know. And yeah. if that does not sum up the power dynamic of understanding how, because I think particularly as women, yeah, we want to be, you know, well, like for so many of us, we're like, fuck yeah, feminism, empowerment. Yeah. Like, we want to be in control of our lives. We want to be independent. We want to be like, you know, emancipated, all of these things. And yet, we can also enjoy giving up control and we can also yeah. enjoy surrendering to someone else and we can also enjoy the act of submission to someone else and that is yeah. like, Kai is a really great character example of that because he is like almost like a caricature of what it means to be the the strong independent mm. um I will not submit to anyone. And then he's actually this big, soft, squishy ball of like, yes, yes please take control, dominate. Exactly. Like, exactly. You know, I, I fucking love it. And I don't understand why I love it, but I do love it. And like, yeah. and like you know, it's, a, it's the same as like that big, like masculine energy of like, I will not submit. Yes. Um, and I think there's, there's been such a shift with feminism as well. Like there's so many women that are like, I will not submit. But it's, it is this freeing sensation when you actually like let it all go and you're just like, yeah, cool, I'm going to do this, but only for the right person. Like yes. there's no yeah. way in hell Kyron would do that with anyone else. But for Kai, he's doing it with Kai. He's submitting to Kai. He's like, oh my gosh, yes, Abby. this is right. Abby. Kai is I mean, submitting yeah. to Avi, yeah. Kai is submitting to Avi, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So there's no ways in hell Kai would do this with anyone else. And, yes. and and Avi as well, you wouldn't expect this from Avi. Like, he gives shit, but he's, like, the, the stoner, like, free-flowing, easygoing guy, but he's also, like, I'm not going to take shit from anyone and I'm just going to, like, give it where you want to get it kind of thing. And he's the one that takes control because he doesn't – he doesn't really need he doesn't take control in the rest of his life he's just easygoing so the dynamic yeah. switches and it's perfect for these guys but also like it's it's so there's so much of a scale here that we can play with like the 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 dom and the submissive and all of these kinds of things and yeah. you can find through reading these books like where you kind of fit in and what you kind of enjoy before you even go out and play by yourself like you can go ha huh, that's interesting before writing these things off so this is why I also think this dynamic is so beautiful because you can see yourself in these positions and go oh I get it now I can put myself in those places and experiment myself so yeah. thank and you, you can, and you can also very much enjoy imagining what it's like to have a daddy daddy RV in your life because <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell them what you just told me before we jumped on about Avi. 
what were we saying before we jumped on? I can't even remember. I feel like my brain has been, my brain has been like scrambled by this book. So <laughs> you were telling me um, that Avi, it was based on a real human. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. We have to, we have to divulge. So I, know, little... I know or like almost had heart failure just before this. We're like <laughs> jiggling like little school girls just before we got on. We had to like fan ourselves and calm the fuck down before we hit record. We were like, and calm. And yeah. home. Yeah. And, and scene. <laughs> and scene. Um, so so just as a little like gift, gift from us to you, dear, dear listeners, and if you're watching along <laughs> with us on YouTube, that Avi was written based, Nyla K based his character upon a very real life person mm -hmm. who is a delicious specimen of a human being. So if you prefer to keep your Avi fictional. And in your mind, like absolutely. I was that. Mean that at first. If you if you like uh being able to see your characters come to life in the flesh, as Nicole is eagerly waiting to be able to do the minute we hop off recording this episode. <laughs> I've like edged her, making her wait. <laughs> I've made her wait. I tortured her by not telling her for a start and then told her just before we jumped on to start recording because I was like, no, you had to go into this with your own imagination of Avi. Like, but now you're allowed to go and see who the real life yeah. is. Um, so oh, we'll make gosh. sure to link that up in the notes that if you do want to go and check out the real life Avi, uh, He's not a he's not a fictional character anymore. He's a real <laughs> life human that you can go and stalk, <laughs> <laughs> and and can enjoy his uh, <laughs> content creation <laughs> if you if you so desire. <laughs> go and support, support his support content. his artistic <laughs> endeavors if you so desire. <laughs> so, my beautiful, oh, my beautiful, beautiful Nicole. This has been an absolute joyful chaotic episode as per usual of our after dark successful witches segment do we have any final thoughts or are we just brain brain melt full only only rv vega uh i think rv vega has <laughs> taken over my brain are we just are drooling, we just a peak, a just peak kind here. of over over excitement about a fictional character um hmm. I, I, I do hope that we have done this book justice and convinced you enough that you need to drop everything and pick up for the fans by now. Yes. <laughs> Just cancel all, cancel all cancel future. Plans Shove the rest of your TBR pile to one <laughs> side <laughs> and immediately commence reading for the mm -hmm. fans. Um, and take your time. Yeah. Go yeah. Oh, uh, so good. Like, well, we say that we say take your time, but I, oh, I, really myself, did, yeah. I myself am an inhaler of books and unashamedly read this book ridiculously fast. I think a friend I was talking to at the time that I read it, basically their message to me was, holy shit, you finished that quickly. I was like, yeah. yeah like, how? how do you do that? Yeah. I, I've got this problem myself. <laughs> I'm reading I've been um, reading two books at the same time <laughs> this week and I'm like I'm 90% way through this one and about 80% of the way through the other one and it's just like yeah yeah it's a lot but it's so <laughs> this is uh, life this is the this, life <laughs> this is what we are here for people so when you when you are reading for the fans please come scream in our mm -hmm. DMs successful which at successful dot witches because we are so here for all of it we are here for all of your favorite moments your screenshots Come and, mm. jump, come and dive into the comments section because this is a book that you definitely want to be sharing. <laughs> what yeah. are we sharing the love with? Um, it is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful experience as always to be recording with you, Nicole. I love you so much. Thank you for coming and joining and joining the madness of successful witches. This is so much fun. Remember, you can find Nicole at Nicole fucking Middleton. You can find me at Elliot Rose author. And we are at successful.witches in all the places for the podcast don't forget we've got episodes coming out every week that are our spicy book recommendations and then once a week i jump on and i interview other deliciously talented indie romance authors that are just going to have you melting to come and meet the author behind the words so make sure to check out those episodes as well we love you so much cannot wait to see you on the next episode thanks for joining our chaos and we will see Bye. you very, very soon. <laughs>